right, let's do this. So what we're going to be looking at now is the normal distribution. We're going to be looking at how to calculate probability if we have something that's normally distributed. So before we can get into that, first we need to recall z-scores. So as a reminder, we learned about z-scores previously. And a z-score tells you how many standard deviations away from the mean a data value is. It does not tell you the value of that data value. It does not tell you um, exactly where that data value lies on like an empirical rule type graph, but it tells you how many standard deviations away from the mean that data value is. And the formula to calculate a z-score is z equals x minus mu divided by sigma. So reminder from before, x represents the data value that we're looking at. Mu is the mean. And sigma is the standard deviation. Now we are using the population symbols right now and that's very important. What we're gonna be looking at right now is information related to the population. So the mean and the standard deviation that we look at in these next few examples are values for the entire population of interest. We will look at later what happens if we're looking at a sample of people because that changes stuff on us just a little bit. So here is our z-score equation. So as a reminder from before, oh, it randomly zoomed in on me. Ah, okay. So if I get a z-score of 1.2, that means my data value, whatever that data value is that I was looking at, is 1.2 standard deviations above the mean. And it's above the mean because the z-score is positive. Okay, so quick refresh on z-scores. So then the normal distribution itself, the normal distribution is the most common distribution in statistics. A lot of things in life are normally distributed. So some properties about that is, first it is symmetric about the mean, which is mu. It is bell-shaped, so the mean, the median, and the mode are all the same value. The area under the curve is equal to 1. The area under the curve is interpreted as a probability. And the curve extends to infinity on either side. It's what we call an asymptote. So let's look at this real quick. So I'm going to switch to black. So if I draw a bell curve, I have just drawn a normal curve a very crooked normal curve. So this is my normal curve. So we have our mean in the middle. Sorry, that was my cat. All right, we've got our mean in the middle and my cat is now stabbing me. Okay, mean in the middle, which is mu. That's also the median and the mode, but we aren't gonna really look at a lot of stuff in relation to the median and the mode in terms of these probabilities. So we have our mean here. The entire area underneath this curve, if I were to shade the whole thing in, all of that going all the way to infinity positive and all the way to infinity negative is equal to one. I'm gonna undo that though, because I'm gonna draw some other stuff. Okay, so the entire area is equal to one. So if we add up each little sliver, we would get one, which if you recall, all the probabilities for an event have to sum to one. So that's why we can interpret this area underneath the curve like a probability. The other thing that we want to remember is when we first saw this distribution, when we first saw this shape, remember we were looking at a histogram. Okay, so we want to remember that when we're looking at this shape, there's an imaginary histogram of the data underneath it. We don't draw the histogram because we don't always have that information, but that's how we identify this shape is from a histogram. So again, I'm going to erase all that. Okay. 
Um, what else can we talk about with this? Uh, remember, we have our empirical rule. So our empirical rule told us that 68% of the data was between one standard deviation below and one standard deviation above. 95% of the data was from two standard deviations below to three standard deviations above. And finally, 99.7% of the data was between three standard deviations below and three standard deviations above. So what we're going to be looking at is, well, how did we get these percentages? Okay, and the simple, not so simple answer is that these percentages were found using a concept in calculus called integration. There's actually a formula for this curve that I've created. And using that formula, you can do what's called an integral, and that will tell you the area under the curve. We are not going to do any calculus. Okay, we're going to let Excel do the calculus for us. But we'll be able to see if we look at one standard deviation below and one standard deviation above, we'll be able to look at that and see, hey, I got an answer pretty close to 68%. So 68% of our data was between one below and one above, but the probability of selecting someone with a value from one below to one above is also 68%. Remember, those are the two different interpretations of probability that we have. So that's the background information that we need in order to calculate probability with the normal distribution.